welcome back to TFT Central. Today we're going to be taking you through the best settings for the MSI MPG 491 CQP. We've recently reviewed the screen that's linked in the description below, so check that out if you want to know a bit more. But we're going to go through the best settings here for both SDR and HDR usage, and also look at some of the OLED care options as well. So we've got the screen in its default configuration at the moment with everything restored to factory settings. So we'll start with an SDR setup. So if we open up the main menu, the first section covers the GI, the gaming intelligence section. You can obviously enable KVM or any of the gaming settings here if you want to. We're going to leave those as they are for now. There's two options for setting up SDR usage and you're going to access these through the professional pro mode setting. So you'll see there's a range of preset modes here for pro mode. There's also some additional settings in the game mode. So those are just other preset modes. So they operate as an alternative to the professional modes. They could all just be in the same menu, but they've been split into two different sections here. So whichever you activate last will be the option that is live for you on the screen. So for instance, we're going to switch this to user. You'll see it switches to user. If I go into game, um, I can change that to FPS. You'll see it looks different. But then if I go back to professional, I change that to user again, it will activate that. So. For SDR usage and the most accuracy, we're going to set up two modes. We're going to use the user mode for the full wide color gamut of the panel, and we're going to configure that as best we can. Or the alternative is to use the sRGB emulation mode, which is also available. So first of all, let's set up the user mode. So we've selected user here. In the image section, we're going to change the brightness down to a setting of 30. That will give you a luminance of around 120 nits. Alternatively, you could go for 41 if you want 150 nits, or 60 if you want 200 nits. So we're going to go for 30 for 120. Contrast can stay on its default, that's fine. No need to change sharpness. Color temperature, we're going to move to the customization menu. And you'll see that the screen goes a little bit darker initially. What we're going to do is we're going to raise each of these channels up to their full 100. Otherwise, the screen is artificially dark and this will get you to a starting point similar to the preset color temperature modes. And then we're just going to make one change here, which is to lower the blue channel down to 99. So that gives us 100 for red, 100 for green, and 99 for blue. That should return you a white point very close to D65 or 6,500 Kelvin. We're going to save that. So that's the screen set up in the use mode. So that will operate with the full native wide gamut of the panel. So if you don't mind the slightly more saturated appearance, for gaming, for multimedia, then by all means use the user mode. If you want a more accurate setup for sRGB content and SDR content, then the alternative is to go into the pro mode and select the sRGB emulation mode here. So that will emulate and clamp to the smaller color space of sRGB. You may also want to potentially use Adobe RGB or maybe even Display P3 if you want to specifically work in those color spaces. But for SDR, sRGB is going to be the most applicable. You'll see that the color changes quite significantly, that's because it's now operating with a reduced color space. In the image section you don't actually have access to change the color temperature anymore, but thankfully the default is very close to D65 anyway, so that's good. We are going to just change the brightness control again though. We're going to move that down to a setting as before of 30 for 120 nits, 41 for 150 nits, or 60 for 200 nits. So what you can do if you want during SDR usage is switch between those two pro modes, the user mode and the sRGB mode, depending on whether you want to operate with the wide color space or the clamped sRGB color space. For HDR configuration, we've enabled HDR in Windows. As we've said before, we'd only recommend enabling HDR when you're actually going to view HDR content. So we've enabled that in Windows and you'll see that at the top of the menu, it now says that HDR is turned on. A lot of these settings are now unavailable, although at the moment there is a bug in that the pro mode that you select in SDR also carries through into HDR mode. So what that means is if you were using the sRGB emulation mode, you'd want to change that back to the user mode for HDR because otherwise you're going to be artificially clamping the color space, which you don't want for HDR content. MSI are working on a firmware update to address this, so in the future you won't need to bother switching, but for now just switch back to the user mode if you're not already using it when you're using HDR input. In the image section you'll see that brightness and contrast are now unavailable. 
The only other setting you might want to play with here is the display HDR mode. You'll see there's two options for True Black 400 or Peak 1000. You'll find a link in the description below to an article that we've written recently where we've studied these two modes in detail. We found that actually the True Black 400 mode can look brighter in some situations, but it really depends on the content, your average picture level and things like that. The Peak 1000 mode will allow you to reach up to the full brightness potential of the panel, although it is a bit darker at the moment in some scenes. So maybe experiment with those two modes depending on your content or check out our article for more updates on that topic. But there's two modes there that you can choose from depending on your preference. There are a few other generic things that you might want to change. So in the gaming menu, you can play with the night vision, AI vision, those kind of gaming enhancements if you want, of course. Adaptive sync you may well want to turn on if you want to use variable refresh rates for NVIDIA G-Sync or AMD FreeSync. If you experience any flickering, particularly in darker content, then you may just want to disable adaptive sync here as well. In the settings menu, there are a couple of things you could change. So here you might want to enable HDMI CEC. That will mean that when you input an HDMI source, like a games console or something else connected, when you power that on, the screen will automatically switch over to that input. So that's quite a handy feature, we think. And then it will automatically switch back once you disable that input as well. So we'd like to turn that on. You can obviously turn on USB Type-C power delivery if you want to here, if you're using that as an input. The other settings we want to look at are in the MSI OLED care section. So we want to turn on as many of these as possible to help mitigate the risk of image retention and burning. So pixel shift you can't actually turn off, but you can change the speed of this depending on whether you find it problematic or noticeable during use. Have a play around with that. We'd probably just stick on the slow setting for the least distracting shifting of the image. Static screen detection, we'd probably turn that on. That will obviously just detect if there's static content on the screen and then dim it after a period of time. You can adjust the, the delay time, the time required, those kind of things here as well, as well as the reducing level as to how much it is dimmed here as well. So experiment with that as well. Multi-logo detection, that will detect static elements on the screens, head-up displays, other logos, and dim those. You can again turn that on and change the reducing level if you want. There's just two settings available here. If you find any problems with any of these settings during actual usage or you find them distracting, by all means, turn them back off. Taskbar detection, again, we'll turn that on. Reducing level, we're gonna increase that up to two. Same with boundary detection. Change the reducing level there to two. So that should be all of the different OLED care options. Just experiment with those, but have as many turned on as you can to help mitigate any risk of image retention. So that is the screen setup for both SDR and HDR usage. You can use that for PC inputs as well as other devices as well. You'll find the link in the description below to our calibrated settings and our calibrated ICC profile. It's designed to be used when you're using the user mode, but we'll clamp the color space back to sRGB for color aware applications. So check that out if you want to use that as well. We've got loads of monitor news and content coming up soon. So do hit subscribe to make sure you stay up to date on that. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you next time.